things off though, James. I don't want to rub salt in the wounds, but I want to start things off with your eagles. Um, I'm fine. You're fine? Are you sure? They need it. Yeah, they need it. They need they it? Need they so, need I want to follow up. You tweeted on Sunday. Hang on. I want to pull it up. I want to pull it up because I want to get it word for word. I'll tell you exactly what it said. <laughs> I know what it's going to happen. It took me a lot to get here. Yeah. Finally, I'm Carson Woods, dude. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I do. You tweeted oh, too much you. recently. All right. Yeah. Oh. So that's basically what you said. Have you recanted on that a bit? Not, nope. not at all. Nope. Listen, man. Um, the, all the talent is there, dude. But you, you can only hang your hat on that for like two or three years, and then it's just you're, you're done after that. It's. it's... Now, listen, I don't think he's terrible. He's not as bad as he's been this year. I, I don't even think that's arguable. Like, he's a starting quarterback in the NFL, clearly. Like, because this year he's probably been 31st, 32nd worst fucking quarterback in the whole NFL. But, like, no, dude, not when, that I low. Watch, when I watch him play, I mean, he leads the league in turnovers and all that shit. But when I watch him play, dude, it just looks so fucking hard for him now, dude. Everything, yeah. even the easiest throw, dude, he's just like. Biggest wind up, fucking throws it as hard as he can. It's behind him. It's just like he can't even hit the easiest plays, man. And it's like, I love that he can make a play that literally like him and one other player in the league can make. But it's like, dude, you can't make the plays that fucking backup quarterbacks can make, dude. And it's just, it's fucking killing us at this point, man. Like, now don't get me wrong. This is a little bit of Andrew Lux uh, syndrome where they just, they never built him a really good team that like played to his strengths and shit like that. But dude, Andrew Luck fucking took teams to the playoffs and didn't fucking go on four game stretches where he can't even complete a pass. Like, yeah. dude, I watch every Eagle snap, obviously. I know you probably watch a lot of football in general. You've seen some, but like, I watch it all, dude. And like, dude, there's just no gimme plays anymore. I don't know what happened to Doug Peterson. I don't know what happened to yeah. Schwartz. I, I don't, I just don't know what happened to this team, dude. Every single snap on both sides of the ball looks so hard for them. So hard for them. So I'm getting to that point as well. This is going to shock everybody. But I'm getting to this point as well with both Doug Peterson and Carson Wentz. Yes. Where I'm, hey, you can, know, can I say one more thing? I'm sorry about go Doug ahead. Peterson. Yeah, go ahead. So, so dude, if, when Doug Peterson first got hired, I was on Fire Doug 2016. Because he is he is Carson Wentz dude sometimes he make he he has games where I'm like dude he's literally like a top three coach in the NFL and he sometimes he makes play, makes like calls plays and makes decisions that I'm like yeah dude my little brother would have made a better decision than that yeah he, he he can get I think way too aggressive at times and I love aggressiveness he goes for fourth down a lot which I like especially I love it especially in plus territory um he he goes for two a lot, which I don't mind, given the extra point is basically a 40-yard kick at this point. Yeah. I don't mind it. And even in the game, he went for two to make it 14-11 to 11 instead of 14-10. to 10. I totally get that. That a, makes a three-point game instead of a, you have to get a touchdown. But then I, I heard that he went for it again in a situation where he didn't really need to. Is that right? Dude, we were de- if he kicked the extra point, we were going to be down three. And he went for two. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Unless your kicker's hurt, that doesn't make sense. Like, are you mentally handicapped? Like, what type of decision is that, dude? It's just, I'm just, dude, I'm done. Like, the 14 to 11 one I get, it makes it a three-point game, and it's also a situation where you're going to get, it was early enough to where you're going to get another possession. Like, you you, if even if you don't get it, you would have a chance to get a touchdown. Like, but I'm getting to this point now with both of them. The old, uh, I, I think, I don't know, what song is it? Who sings it? I think it's one of the Jackson 5. I think Janet Jackson, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Yep. And that's where I'm getting to with both of them. Since that Super Bowl run, Carson Wentz has been average. Doug Peterson hasn't been over, I think, 9-7. and seven. Both years, he's dude, been around 500. 500 teams. They're, five, they're average, and I, I hate, dude. So me and you have both been pretty lucky. I've only seen three losing Eagle seasons in 20 years. They've been under 500 three times in 20 years. Like, but I don't see this all the time. So, like, this is just sucks, dude. It just ruined my football season, dude. Like, I don't care if you're a Super Bowl contender, but can you be competitive, dude? Like, like Philly shouldn't be ever be a four-win team. Like, you are one of those franchises that you should be 500 on your worst year. 
I just, I'm, I'm fucking done with them, dude. I hope they lose out. They're going to lose their next five games handily. Go look at that schedule. I know. It's not great. I, I was thinking about it this weekend with Cleveland. I'm like, man, I don't know. But it's always one of those games where I start to not believe in Doug Peterson or Carson Wentz anymore that they turn it around. It's true, but it's like it's too late at this point. You I know. can't do this. Even if they make the playoffs, which is still a fucking strong possibility, it's like, dude, that's not enough. Like, going 9-7 and seven and squeaking in because the division is terrible. Like, dude, if all the other teams in the division were absolutely abysmal, you guys would have been fired a long time. Ago. You're benefiting from making the playoffs and winning the division at nine and seven. That's not a win. It, like that's not a division winner at nine and seven. It's not. And they won it last year. It's just I'm I'm done. I don't even want to talk about. It. I'm just fucking done. I'm, I just I fucking hate that I'm at this point with Carson Wentz, dude. Because I was the biggest Carson Wentz fan. I love Carson Wentz. I, I sent you that uh, uh, GIF or GIF, whatever you want to call it, of. Brokeback Mountain, when Jake Gyllenhaal says, I wish I knew how to quit you. That's how I am with Carson Wentz. Man, I wish I knew how to quit you. <laughs> Literally, dude. It's just um, fucking absurd. So, other, a lot of big news. And it wasn't a crazy weekend, like, in terms of upsets. We both did very well in our picks. I'll get to that later in the week. But a lot of good storylines. Uh, first, yep. there was... Let me pull it up here. Um, so, obviously, the... Arizona Buffalo game was crazy. Uh, I, I I was dead set on Buffalo winning that game. I picked them to win. They're kind of in the game the whole game. They're trailing, and no, they, Josh they Allen goes on this great drive with less than a minute left, scores the game-winning touchdown. I'm texting everyone. I'm like, you know, fuck you. I, you know, Josh Allen's the man for the win. Whatever. Thirty-four seconds left, no chance. And then Kyler Murray goes. To midfield, throws a prayer of a pass, and DeAndre Hopkins comes down with it with three dudes around him. Just just insane. I felt heartbroken for Buffalo. I really did. No, I did too, because you know, I already said they're my second favorite in the league. But you know who else is probably one of my favorite teams in the league? Arizona with Kyler Murray. They're sick. Arizona, I don't think they're that good. They're, they're, they have no defense. Yeah, their defense is, I think, overrated. I, I've they're, said, aside from them playing the Jets and Washington and, I believe, the Giants. Their Seahawks. Or Dallas. Like, it was bro, Dallas. Really their don't. defense has given up 30 points per game. Those three games keep them to, like, a reasonable number in points per game defensively. Uh, but take away those, they're, at, they're giving up about 30 points a game, which is what they did on yeah. Sunday. It's um, Seahawks. Like, and they've been very fortunate against Buffalo and Seattle. Uh I think they're they're obviously much better. I don't think they're well coached. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is that good of a coach. But I do think Kyler Murray's special. He is one of those guys you just gotta tune in. He he I think he's more dynamic he's than Russell. I think he's more dynamic than Russell Wilson. He was who I comped him to when he came out, but I think he's better. Yes. He yes. He he's a he's a better runner. Russell Wilson can run when he wants to, but he's mostly a thrower. Kyler Murray is dynamic. Is it actual electric. Yes. 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 Dude, he's gonna have like eighteen rushing touchdowns this year or something. I yeah, I saw that. he's he's on pace. I think to break that rushing record. I, I think, think the record's dude, fourteen like, or something for a quarterback. Just like a, dude, anytime they get like the five yard line, it's a gimme. You can run it in almost every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of the Seahawks, they drop their what? I think second game in a row, something yeah. like that. Uh, Russell Wilson has not looked good for about three weeks in a row. Maybe more like two weeks. Uh, I saw it coming. I picked the Rams. Uh, I'm still not. I was. I've never been sold on the Seahawks. I've said it since last year. This team is incredibly overrated, except for Russell Wilson. They traded for Jamal Adams, and I said that this isn't going to make as much of an impact as you think. Everyone said I was stupid, and here we are. They're six and three solely because of Russell Wilson. They can't get after the passer. They can't stop anyone in the secondary. What are they good at? Just like I, I'm. Like, I don't want to just sit here and toot my own horn and say I was right, I was right, I was right, even though I was. But just, I'm just asking, what are they good at? What are they good at? You're right. If you if you have a good enough corner to take away DK Metcalf, they're done. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Rams, I mean, the Rams are a good team. I don't think they're a great team, but they're physical. I'm a little worried if they played Green Bay in the, in the playoffs. And obviously they were coming off a bye, so I get that. Sean McVay's a really good coach, but... I think Seattle uh, is in trouble. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, this, this division ain't easy, and they got to play Arizona one more time. They got to play the no, they got to play Arizona. I think this week. 
yep. on Thursday Night Football. Uh, they got to play the Rams again. They got to play the 49ers again. They could lose all three games. Yep. I mean, maybe not the 49ers, but they could lose two of those three. No, I agree. I agree. Um, you were right on that. I got to give you your kudos there. What's that? About Seattle? Yeah. They're just not good. Like, I've tried to tell people, where are they the good on? Where is their, how is their roster good? It's not. It's not. And then, then, like, they try to, like, it, it's, I shouldn't say they try to talk themselves into, or people try to talk themselves into their drafts being good, because no one acknowledges that their drafts have not been very good in the last few years. Their last three first round picks were Rashad Penny, who's not on the field at all, LJ Collier, who I think is on the field, he's just not that good, and then Jordan Brooks ain't on the field much this year. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It, they're just not that good, and I think that they've been incre- They were well run once upon a time, but I think people have caught up to how Pete Carroll runs his defense, yep. and they they're able to move the ball. Yeah, and they're they're. I mean, frankly, they're just missing some some defensive talent at this point. They have a couple. High they got Brad Bobby Wagner, who's very good. They have Jamal Adams, who's very good. Those are two cornerstones of a defense. Problem is, the rest of the defense has really doesn't have anyone any good. And people try to tell me that the corner, not Shaquem Griffin, but his brother who's the corner is some sort of stud. And I'm like, he's all right. I wouldn't call him a stud. Yeah. But their D-line has zero pass rush. I, I, I just, I'm tired of Seattle. People, people, people say Green Bay is fraud, fraudulent, but I'm telling you Seattle's more fraudulent. <laughs> I, I don't disagree. You made some very good points there. You talked me out of them. Remember, I picked them, and you talked. I know, me out of the Rams. I, well, mostly because of the Rams and the numbers I gave from for Sean McVay when he's off a of bye and stuff like that. But I just saw him like, all right, McVay has two weeks to prepare for probably one of the worst defenses in the NFL. I'm sure he's going to light him up at least a little bit. And he did a but little bit. Said, we're like, the only way Seattle's going to win is if they score like 35 points. So, yep. Um, so another game I want to talk about. Baltimore, New England. Obviously, very surprising. We both thought Baltimore was going to win. Um, do you think there's trouble for Baltimore? I'm yeah. kind of got to the point where. I do. Do you? I I, I think they're going to be fine. You want to know why? I mean, dude, they're going to be fine in the sense that they're still going to be really good. Yeah. I just mean that they're. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, dude. It's it's getting close to panic button time with Lamar Jackson. I don't. He played well. Dude, they're coming. To all the. All the things the Scouts said that everyone was shitting on the Scouts for, even though they were right. It's like, okay, he had a really good season, MVP season. I love Lamar Jackson. I know he's a good kid. But, like, everyone was right. He doesn't have a great arm. Like, so everyone that was like, I don't know, it was just, like, annoying how everyone was like, oh, a running back. Huh? It's like, dude, he's he's not a great pure quarterback. Like, he was I'm, – dude, I'm telling you, like, I think he had a RG3 season on fucking steroids last year. I think that's what happened. And – He's, I mean, he's a good player. He's very dynamic. He can throw. It's not like he's fucking Tim Tebow, but, like, I just don't ever see him being a top five quarterback. Man. I don't think he's close. I disagree. So, keep in mind that Sunday night, he went up against Bill Belichick, who's the greatest coach of all time, in New England, which, even without fans, is a tough place to play, in a monsoon. He, and he threw for 250 yards. He only had 10 in, in completions. He did have a pick, two touchdowns. He didn't have a bad game. He rushed for 55 yards. No, hey, right, because he's not a bad – I'm not saying he sucks, dude. I just meant, like, people were solidifying him in, like, that top three conversation because he was his MVP last year, which is not, dude. He was – same with Wentz right now. He was as good as I think he was. They'd be way better than they are. I mean, the, the Ravens could be undefeated right now with, with decent – play from Lamar Lamar Jackson. I know because he's my fucking fantasy quarterback, and I'm in last place right now. Like, <laughs> he's not doing well. Okay, like, I know so numbers are full how's the it. rest of your team, though? You want to blame it on Lamar Jackson, but how's the rest of your fantasy my, team? My top, my top three picks were Zeke. Uh, uh, he hasn't Eckler. done much. He's I fumbled like 12 it. times this year. Austin Eckler got fucking hurt, yeah. and Lamar Jackson was my third rounder, so my top three picks are all mediocre at best. Well, well I don't think – that's more to, yeah, I think, just bad luck with injuries. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, but I don't know, man. That's just – look, Lamar isn't as great as I thought he was. He's not – I don't even think that's hard. I disagree. I think Lamar Jackson's still very good. I'd put him in the top five. No. Who would you put in the top five then? No shot, bro. Who would you put um, in there? 
Russell, Patrick, Aaron. Okay. I would put Kyler above him. Not even, I wouldn't think twice about it. Kyler's better than him. What the fuck can Lamar Jackson do that Kyler Murray can't do better? I mean, that's true. That's very true. Okay, that's, that's, that's. Uh, no, granted, he's uh, only a, he's got a one year of experience ahead of him. Okay. But I mean, he was better. I know you can't really. Josh Allen's compare. better. Josh Allen's better. Josh Allen's better than Lamar Jackson. You he can talk. Me, you know how much I love Josh Allen. You can talk me into he's that. Not look like a, he doesn't look like a fucking gazelle when he runs, but he runs just as good. Yeah, he's look a good at, runner. Look at his, speaking of good dude, runners, I, I do want to say. Speaking of good runners, I do feel like it is. My duty at this point to give the Giants some credit. I have shit on the Giants for months, and they're here scrappy. we are. They're still not good. They're three and seven. No, they're scrappy though. But they're they are scrappy. Yeah. Daniel Jones has had back-to-back weeks where he hasn't had a turnover. So hats off to him, I suppose. I still don't think he's that good. <laughs> um. But overall, I mean, overall, he, the Giants are very scrappy. I think Joe Judge is looking more and more like the guy to lead the Giants. Yeah, They're playing agree. well for him. Their offense is starting to buy in. They were a horrible offensive team at the beginning of the year, but now they're starting to run the ball well. They figured out their identity, and that's, you know, whatever they're working with Daniel Jones, with his rushing ability, it's opening up passing lanes. It gives them options. They realize what they Shane. are. What? That's all. I lost it. Anyway. Oh, come on. Anyway, back to what I was saying. The Giants are... Shit. So, poor connection. Video will resume automatically when the connection improves. Great. Anyway, back to what I was saying. The Giants are better than what I thought. Shit. The Giants are better than what I thought. Defensively, they're a very underrated group, and it doesn't make sense because I don't think the Giants roster is good at all. The only explanation is coaching. It's got to be good coaching. That's why I think Joe Judge has done a pretty good job this year. Um, so far, recently, I should say, has exceeded my expectations. Um, this was the team I thought would be like 4-12, and 3-13, and 13, and they have been scrappy, and they've been in games. They could be better than 3-7. and seven. Not available. <sighs> well, I'll just keep myself on. Um, what else can we talk about? Uh, the Bucks destroyed the Panthers, which does surprise me a lot because I thought the Panthers would keep that a game or make that a game. Um, Bucks answered after being embarrassed on Sunday Night Football. I'm not totally surprised about that, especially since Brady has been very good coming off losses. Or I said, I think I said to come off a bye. The Bucks are. Finish, or played very well coming off a bad loss, um, which isn't surprising because that's kind of what Brady's done his whole career, and they're well coached. So not totally surprising. I did think Carolina would make that a game, though. I'll try it again. Um, Miami keeps winning. I'm very high on the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I'm still trying to see if he's going to pick up, which doesn't look like he's going to right now. I don't think so. Um, but the Dolphins have now won, I think, five games in a row, maybe four games in a row. Uh, two is playing very well. The, the Dolphins just, are just playing very well. They're playing very good complementary football right now, which I think is very important. Um, defensively, they're playing extremely well. They, I think I've seen that they're average, or allowing close to like 15 points per game offensively uh, in their last five games or so. Uh or I'm sorry, giving up about 15 points defensively. Um, two is like I said, two is playing well. Special teams are playing very well. They're getting scores outside of offense, which is huge. That's why I say complimentary football. But Dolphins are legit, and looking at their schedule, th- I think this team could easily be 11 and five by season's end. They got the Broncos this week, could be a win. 
in Denver. That's tricky. Then they got the Jets. They'll likely win that game. Then the Bengals come to Miami. That's probably a win. So they're at least taking two out of those three, maybe three out of three. There's a very good chance that by mid-December, the Dolphins are nine and three, maybe eight and four. Then they got Kansas City at home. Tall order. They could maybe pull off an upset, though. I would give them the loss, though. New England coming to Miami, which Bill Belichick has always struggled uh, in Miami in December. So that's, you know, eight. We'll, we'll call it eight and four. Kansas City is eight and five. And then my or, uh, New England coming to town, that's 10 and five. Then they got to go to Vegas. That's a tall order. And then they finish the season with Vegas and Buffalo. That's Those are tall orders. I'd probably lean toward them losing those games. James just said to call back, so we'll let's see. There he is. Jesus Christ, man. I called you like ten times. Man. I called I you phone. twice. I think my phone was still fucked up. I know you, I know you, we, I had to hear you bitch about how you hate this new update. <laughs> so anyway, back to, you were trying to interrupt me talking about the Giants. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, did you hear what happened to Joe Judge today? I did not, what? Bro, him and his fucking defensive lineman coach got in a fist fight in Joe Judge got the shit beat out of him today by his own Damn. coach. Well, that's Dude, not a good look. Yeah. Well, it's because Joe, Joe Judge talks shit. Like, I don't know if he's seen, like, the press conferences and shit. Like, he's a very, like, abrasive, in a good way. Like, I like my football coaches like that. Yeah. Like, he's, like, he's got, like, a uh, like a, uh, a Jim Harbaugh, like, yeah. ish to him, kind of. Well, that that's not a good look for a team that's – I Only what, is. like I a half game out of winning the East? Bro, I think his his players might fuck with that a little bit, honestly. I don't know. Like it could be. I don't know. I mean, they're coming off a big win. I don't get that. Unless that, like, it's just one of those instances where the team is truly divided because their defense is playing well, offensively they're not playing all that all that well. Uh, maybe they're like, we're just carrying the team right now, and I don't know. They're fighting, but maybe it was just two dudes getting into a. So I was while you were gone. I I talked about a little bit how Tampa Bay looked really good, obviously against Carolina. I didn't see that kind of performance coming, uh, but I mostly talked about the Dolphins. The Dolphins have now won. I believe it's five games in a row. Two is playing well, and I went through their schedule. Have you seen their, the rest of their schedule, James? It's not very hard. It's at Denver this week. That yeah. could be, that could be tricky. No, stop. Oh, well, I, I'm just saying, Denver's a tough place to play. You never know. I would I would still pick Miami, though. Then they go to the Jets. That's a win. Cincinnati comes to Miami. That's a win. That's 9-3 and three with Kansas City coming to town. That's awesome, dude. And I, I don't that. think that's as like an easy Kansas City win right now no, with the way not, Miami's I'm, defense is playing. I, I was about to say, any t- they have two good quarters. Like, they're, they're going to be able to cover some of them. But I would still pick Kansas City. That's likely 9-4. and four. <laughs> New England comes to town. I think that's 10-4. and four. Then they finish the year with Vegas and Buffalo. They probably drop both those games, if I were to guess right now. That's still 10-6. 10-5? Or 10-6. Okay. That's 10-6. I mean, Could be 11-5, and five, though, by season's end. But that's a team on the come-up. Nope. I know, and they still have holes everywhere, just about. And Brian Flores is a great coach. I thought I mean, it last year. I mean, he's the coach of the year. Is he not the coach of the year? I don't see how he's not. Who else would you it, put? I mean, I, I, that's exactly what I was going to say. I mean, I, I don't think it's it's possible for him not to be at this point. I mean, his, his team is the biggest surprise, and you could argue it's because of coaching. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like they just all oh, they went and got a bunch of great, amazing players. Like they did get good. Players, they they but. went out and paid for uh, what's his name? The guy from the Cowboys. Uh, Byron Jones. Byron Jones. Thank you. They did go out and get him. That's a great player. But then the rest of their the guys that they signed were just good depth pieces. Yep. They weren't exactly. world beaters. Uh, I also want to mention Chicago's falling apart. They're averaging about 16 points per game offensively. They lost four games in a row. Looking more and more like. I thought they lost five in a row. They were five and one at one point, so I think it's and they're now five and five, so I think it's four in a row. Maybe it feels like five in a row. But Chicago, it's looking more and more like Green Bay is just going to run away with this division. They are now two games ahead of Chicago if they win this week, because Chicago's on a bye. Uh, if they win this week, it'll be three games ahead of Chicago. Then they do have to play them twice. Minnesota is incredibly hot right now, but. They, we've already played Minnesota twice, and they're still four and five. 
And I might as well, while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and talk about my Packers uh, p- performance against the Jaguars, which was not good at all. It was not, man. I thought you were on suicide watch there for a minute. I, I definitely was for, for a little while. But it was just one of those games where I never really panicked. I did panic, but I, I, didn't, exactly panic. I, I didn't panic panic. Yeah. Like, it was just like, actually, why are we still hanging around with this team? Exactly. You never actually thought the Packers were going to lose, and I didn't either, but it, it's one of those things where it's just like, fuck, dude, if this was 25 other teams, we'd be getting yes. our ass kicked right now. And like, overall, I think it's time to talk about how Green Bay has not played all that well. They, they got they, destroyed by Tampa you know, a few weeks ago. They go to Houston, kind of sluggish against Houston, even though they won by two scores. Then Minnesota came to town. They lost that game, should have won. Then last week they, or they de- they did soundly defeat a depleted San Francisco team. So I would go ahead and scratch that. Then Jacksonville comes to town and they struggle with Jacksonville. This is very concerning to me because now yeah. we got to play Indianapolis. We got to play Chicago coming off a bye. We got to play Philadelphia, who's getting healthier. I'm a little concerned. Honestly, man, now that you laid it all out for me, because I hadn't really seen it week after week like that. I think their problem is they're not as physical as they need to be. No, they, I know. They, that's they my biggest complaint with LeFleur. And, and, yeah, maybe that's the thing with LeFleur, but isn't Pettin like, a pretty, like, hard-nosed defensive coordinator? I can't I mean, stand like, Mike Pettin. If he is, he doesn't show it on the field with yeah. his guys on the field because we play 10 yards off coverage in the secondary every damn snap. We get abused at the line of scrimmage. He comes off at this hard, as this hard-nosed guy, but we can't do anything right defensively. No, no, I will say. You're educating me. I will say this: defense played somewhat well against Jacksonville. Granted, it's Jacksonville, but take away two turnovers by Rodgers and Devonte Adams and a special teams touchdown, the defense really only gives up a field goal in that game. Yeah, no, I was gonna say. I mean, you you're not, you're not worried about that. It, I I was more concerned with what their defense did to your offense. Yeah, than exactly. Your and it's even that, like, I, I listened to McAfee talk yesterday, and he made some good points, I thought. It was just one of those games where Green Bay had control of the game. It may not have felt like it, but they did. They made plays when they needed to. But yeah. it was always negated by a penalty or some stupid mistake turnover, you know. And those are rare with Green Bay. This, you know, we don't commit a lot of turnovers. But, and Aaron Rodgers threw an interception. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, Devontae Adams fumbled. Doesn't happen very often. So it's just one of those weird games, probably where we just didn't show up offensively. Yeah, and, and, and that's honestly all I think it is, man. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily like a pattern. No, and I don't think so either. I mean, listen, the pat, the pat, no, no, the pattern is coming up flat in home games. That is the clear pattern. Yeah. Okay. Fair. But overall, they moved the ball somewhat well. Stupid penalties and stupid mistakes really hurt them at times. I was just gonna say, I think it's just kind of coming out that like this is this is what the Packers are. They're very, very, very good. I don't necessarily think they're elite. That's all. I don't Who else would you? See, but I, I, I don't disagree with you at all. But I think the entire yeah. NFC is like that. No, bro, could not agree more. The NFC has proven the, the whole offseason. I was telling Art, I'm like, dude, I get it. The, the top end teams are in the AFC, but all the NFC's good. They're all like decent, and like yeah. that is not true. <laughs> the, I, I think all seven teams, except for whoever wins the NFC East, all, so six of the seven teams that are going to make the playoffs this year. Have a chance to win the NFC. Yeah. Um, yep. So that's my opinion. We've kind of done all the recaps. Or not worthy. Oh, I'll say this: the Saints. So the Saints beat the 49ers. And yeah. I, did you listen to part of my take talk about this game? No, I didn't. No, I'm I didn't. kind of on Big Cat bandwa- conspiracy bandwagon that Drew Brees is more hurt than they than they let on. Because he hurt, he landed on his shoulder. They called it a rib injury, but he landed on his shoulder. Your ribs aren't in your shoulders. I know that it could have had some sort of an effect to your ribs, but cracked ribs, I'm not really buying it. Dude, I just don't, how did he crack ribs on both sides and have a punctured lung? Like, what play did that happen? I don't know. I'll have to go look, but I'm kind of with Big Cat here if that's true. Yeah, that'd be crazy if that was true. And I'll tell you right now, this is worrisome because I don't trust Jameis Winston at all. No, I don't either. I don't either. Uh, so let's go ahead and preview the Thursday night game. It is Arizona against Seattle. As of right now, Seattle is a three-point favorite. Uh, 
Who, who, who do you like in this game? Arizona. I think they're I think, hot. I, I need to do. I need to do more research on Arizona. They're just hot. I think they're. They gonna are be. hot. No, um, neither defense is that good. I'll probably give the edge to Seattle. I'll probably go Seattle good. at home. Both defenses aren't playing well. I'll take Russell Wilson at home. All right, uh, I'll let you go. I got to get back to work here. All right, brother. Have a good one. Later. Later, man.